So what is it that we propose to build? Here's a conceptual drawing of phase one. Phase one would be a 30 unit senior apartment building containing 15 units of one bedroom and 15 units of two bedrooms. Two separate buildings, one a two story, the other a three story. Key features are primarily um, the fact that all of the property will be accessible. Half of the units will be fully ADA or Section 504 compliant. Um, under building parking, under both buildings, will accommodate all required parking. We'll put surface parking on, on the deck for ADA and visitors. As well, we'll put a, a, a bus transit pickup um, shelter. This proposal, if you've been following this over time, this proposal differs significantly from the very first one we put in. That was a 20 unit proposal with much larger um, site development and commitment of funds on the front end of the project. And that 20 unit project was one that we changed in response to, was in response to conversations with the neighbors and others in the community that said, um, not so happy about a family development on that site for all kinds of reasons, school impact, safety, other sorts of things. So we started looking at alternatives and the current proposal that we are moving forward with um, <clears throat> is a mixed use development. It's that 30 unit project that you see in the lower corner. This is a mixed use commercial development and this is phase two to be reserved for another affordable housing project. This sketch in the lower right hand corner is one that's been prepared by Mr. Dowling working with Clint Erb of Better Body Fitness. He has come forward to express a commercial interest in developing the commercial corridor, which again resulted from conversations with the community and the neighborhood to say many people would like to see a commercial corridor there preserved. So he has come forward with a concept that we think is, is very compatible and very exciting, and we'd like to have the opportunity to work with him and the Department of Commerce to figure out how to make that an acceptable NSP application or an NSP use. We're very excited about the potential. We think that this would be another important addition of quality affordable housing in the community. And with your help, um, we intend to pursue the funding necessary to make this a reality. We have to keep in mind the changing dynamics of retirement in this country, and particularly in our town, um, that people approaching retirement age, unless you're a public employee of some sort, you really do not no longer have a fixed retirement income. You may have 401k and investments and things like that. Those have taken some hits in recent years. And so many of us will be facing a real challenge in terms of how to meet our basic housing needs. And so um, this will be the, the need that we're, we're meeting may be our own. Um, the project location is ideal in terms of the central location. Transportation is such a pivotal role uh, in the lives of seniors. Uh, because of the need to access community services through other means than their own vehicles. I really come here to speak for something, and what I'm speaking for is the children. The impact of additional families on the school system in that area would be severe. Not only that, the safety of children in that area would be jeopardized by the traffic and the fact that um, we're putting we're corralling a lot of low-income families in one space, even to the extent that some proposals that have been, we've been shown, have included fencing the area. We talk about the senior citizen housing as being phase one, but phase two says multi-family housing. That implies that there could be additional children and young people. It also places Helena High School smack between two low-income housing projects. To have a high school squash between two low-income housing projects and children um, basically impounded in one area of town just seems immoral to me. I can't support that. The notion that certain neighborhoods just aren't acceptable for residential or some other kind of use, I don't think we can live with that uh, theory any longer. All across the country, the community planners are looking more and more at mixed-use development as a way to keep their downtowns vibrant, uh, not just allow for commercial development without any thought of residential development. The city, in its current efforts of 
redrafting its growth policy is proposing large areas of the city for mixed use, including this area. That's a concept that the city is working on right now. Now, that doesn't necessarily immediately relate to a change in zoning, but the city itself is thinking in terms of mixed use for the area. And I don't, I don't think that we can, we can take the approach of just saying this area is commercial only, can't be considered for housing. Uh, I, I've listened to this debate and participated in it for the past year, and many times people have suggested not here, someplace else. Rocky should go build uh, low-income housing or senior housing someplace else. And frankly, if, if people really took a hard look at it, they'd see that that has been done. Uh, those facilities are built throughout the community. It's not located in this one particular area. And we can't simply always say it's got to be someplace else. Please look at the taxes and, and take into account that it's not just property taxes the city, county, and state would lose when commercial retail, um, the most finest use for the land is not done. Uh, you're also going to lose the, the jobs that would be crema created in all that commercial activity. The, the income taxes from the business, the income tax from the employees, the, the additional taxes that come from housing that the employees procure, it goes on and on. The multiplying effect is much more for an ongoing, ongoing uh, commercial activity because it will keep generating income year after year after year that uh, this proposal is throwing out of the system. It's just too much to take away.